Alternative Radio. Odin, Missy and I are talking about progress, not perfection. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. everyone to another episode of On Finding Peace. This is the podcast where Missy and I talk about just daily tips that you can do to find your inner peace and happiness. And today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite phrases, um, that's progress, not perfection. So we'll break that apart a little bit and see how that can help all of us. So How's it going, uh, Missy, down in the, I assume, warm southern weather? Um, it's actually, it's uh, pretty warm today. It's about 70 degrees, but it's overcast, so it's a little humid. Uh, so I don't have the doors and windows open like I have been for the last few days, but um, still very nice. No, no complaints. How about yourself? I see you've got a nice breeze going in the background there. Yeah, it's uh, quite breezy. There's a little uh, chill in the air, although it's supposed to get into the 70s later. And nice. that's a little weird for this time. But um, but we should cool down next week. And there's even the slight chance of uh, snow next week. So. Oh, I don't miss that. <laughs> I do miss the change in season. I just don't miss the snow because it's cold. <laughs> But I'll be visiting it here soon as well. I've got a, a family trip planned, so we'll be coming up nice. to maybe do some snow tubing and stuff with my my uh, kids. So I'm excited about that. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. No, I miss it. I. Uh, but you know. Well, hopefully it'll be there <laughs> for <Because>. you. <laughs> Because. Yeah. But as you know, if we do get it, you know, next week, you know, it's, it's going to melt like within hours. So, yeah. you know, it'd be too warm still. Yeah. So don't blink, take a few pictures. It'll yeah. be gone. Yeah. That's it. Hopefully, maybe for Christmas, another month or so for you guys. That would be nice. Yeah. So, so why is this your favorite phrase? Oh, for a lot of reasons. I've been using this phrase for ages. I don't, I don't even know when I picked it up, um, but it was, it was a long time ago. And I don't know who we can attribute this to. Um, I know I didn't come up with it, so I'll just put that out there, yeah. but I, I don't know who to attribute it to or else I would. Um, but I like it mainly because I think a number of us get ourselves trapped into seeking perfection in what we're doing. Mm. And that goes back to my other favorite topic of expectations. But I, I think we look that our goal, if we're trying anything, you know, and, and whether that's in dieting or mental health or just, you know, wanting to feel better that the expectation is you know it, it doesn't count until i've reached that perfection mm. and i think that can get us messed up because then we're not seeing the progress that we're making along the way and i've had a, a number of clients you know who get disappointed because they keep saying, you know, I'm, I haven't reached my goal yet. You know, I'm not there yet. Which as, as the realist, I, I always agree with them. I mean, sure you're not, you know, I mean, whatever their goal was, I mean, they're not there yet, but we then have to go back and look at what is all the progress that you have made up to this point? You know, so then we kind of go back in history a bit to say, well, you know, whenever they started seeing me, you know, look how you were then, look how you are now. Mm -hmm. Are you different now? Right. 
So when we do that, they can see the progress and, and be somewhat, you know, uplifted by the progress. Yet they always finish it with, yeah, but I'm still not at my goal. Um, so I think the more that we can help people to understand that if we can refocus our thought patterns on what progress we're making versus what is the perfection that we're aiming toward. Mm. And we're not getting rid of that perfection. And all I'm meeting right now by perfection is goal. Right. You know, so whatever the goal is, we're, we're not changing the goal. We're just saying, you know, celebrate the moments um, of change that are helping you to get to that goal, even though you're not at the goal yet. So, okay, so a few thoughts are coming to me about everything that you're talking about. And then I, I wholeheartedly agree. So if I know everybody's probably heard the saying, you know, aim for the moon and you'll at least land among the stars, right? You know, like you're on your mm-hmm. way and you might not get there right away, like right when you expect, but like, what are you celebrating along the way? Right. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, like I might have, um, let's just say I'll use my kids because I would say that I was quite domesticated when I became a parent. And, you know, I, I had the thought of you should do this. You shouldn't do that. You need to do this. You don't need to do that. You know, and as I've aged as a parent, as I've grown as a parent, you know, um, I've let those kind of things go. Like I let the control go and recognize that, that they have the ability to do these things themselves, but like celebrating those things like, okay, yeah, my, Mm -hmm. my son wants to do this with the car or, you know, like he's so excited about this and I'm not so excited about it because, you know, maybe fear or anxiety or whatever it was at the time. Um, But when I didn't say anything and let him make the choice and let him go through with it, you know, that was a celebration moment for me. Like, okay, this is growth as a parent and not having to juggle all the balls, right? And make sure mm-hmm. he gets to where he's going. Right now, I really just need to make sure I get where I'm supposed to go. And and the perfection to me is in that moment. Like, because in this moment that we'll never get back, right? That, that I can't go backwards and I can't go forward to the next moment. But this moment, yep. it's perfect. There's nothing that I need. And I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. And and I will always be that way, like every single moment. And so for me, even though like we look at progress as doing in our society, like, well, what did you get done and how far have you come? And, you know, to me, the, the, the progress is staying with the present moment. So then you can see your perfection. Right. And, and I don't disagree with the forward thinking, the going for the goal. And I know that everything is divinely orchestrated and perfectly will work out for me. So Mm -hmm. as long as I stay in that present moment, then I don't have to worry about the future. And I definitely don't need to bring the luggage and and baggage of the past into my future because I'll, I'll repeat it, you know? So, um, you know, one other thing that I heard in there is that like, What we do is we have expectations, like you said, right? But we beat ourselves up, which never does anybody any good, right? So why beat yourself up? Like be your own best friend, keep cheering yourself on, keep keep going like, all right, you're on your way, you're doing the best you can. And well, we didn't get to that today, but that's okay. You know, like, you know, there's always tomorrow, right? There's always the next moment. There's always, and and instead we we bog ourselves down with the shoulds, right? We should all over mm-hmm. ourselves, as Tony Robbins says. And, um, you know, and I love that saying because it's true. Well, I've yep. done this today. Well, guess what? Maybe, maybe your mind and your body needed to relax and veg out on TV and didn't feel like doing the laundry or the dishes. It's okay. Everybody's been there, you know, like you need, yeah. you need a mental health day. That's what I call it. It's like, we could do just oh, yeah. no, exactly. nothing. Right. And, um, the, the, the point is, we don't want to get into a habit of doing that, you know, because then we don't feel like we're making any progress. You know, we're staying in our comfort zone and you really get to reach outside of your comfort zone when you're working to grow. Yep. Yeah. And it, it's kind of funny because recently I, I was talking to a client about, um, you know, the progress that they're making and, and they're not really seeing 
a lot of the progress that they're making. Um, and they tend to focus on the negativity of things versus the positivity. And I was doing, you know, a, a cognitive behavioral stuff with them about shifting from those negative thoughts to the positive thoughts. And, you know, they said, well, you're always looking at the positive pieces, but the positive pieces allow me to slack off on things mm. where when I think about the negatives and the example, you know, used was I, I haven't cleaned out the uh, kitty litter when I focus on that and then I can look at myself and say, well, that was wrong and I should have done it. And, you know, now my house is going to smell. And so if I, I look at all of that and berate myself for it, then it's, it's just going to get done. worse. Yeah. Right. Now I, this person thought it would get done. And, oh. and, and my focus was, <laughs> okay, if we shift this over then to the positives, right. You know, what is the positive thing of having that kitty litter clean? You know, and they said, well, my place doesn't smell like cat and, and I really don't want it to smell like cat. Right. So in my mind, the way that I, I helped you to refocus this was let's look at both of these options because both are valid options, but which one makes you feel better? Mm. You know, in, in the sense that you could be rate yourself and look at all of the negative pieces of that. And, and if you think that's motivating, you know, then you get it done, although you're probably not going to get it done and you're berating yourself. Or you can look at it from the positive viewpoint and say, no, I didn't do it. And I would like to be doing it because then my place doesn't smell. So maybe I'll just go do it. And in this way, you're not berating yourself and you're still getting it done. So the, so I brought up domestication earlier, right? Because, yep. you know, these are, these are the things when I say domestication, I think these are the things that our parents taught us, that their parents taught them and so on and so forth, rather than the ability to just go with your intuition, go with what you feel is the highest and best for yourself, right? And it sounds as if, you know, it sounds like your young lady is, is um, maybe kind of going back to, well, you know, well, maybe this is what my parents did and this is what's right. And if it feels good, then, you know, like, or if it's getting the things done, it's working, then why change it? So I can agree in that regard. And mm -hmm. at the same time, like, I wonder, you know, how her mental health is, right? You know, like, I wonder, like, mentally, if you're beating yourself up, like, you can't, like, there's just not a possible way to feel good about your, I mean, it, yep. you feel good that you accomplished something. But at the same time, I'm not certain that you feel good about yourself. Like you're never going to find yep. happiness and joy and peace in your life. If those are the kind of things that, that you're um, motivating yourself with. Right. And, and that was what I was trying to help her with because she has come a long way mm -hmm. and really deserves to be celebrating Right. All of that, not to be berating for some of the things that may not be huge right now. Yeah. You know, um, so yes, you need to get that cleaned and, and all of that, but you don't need to berate yourself for doing that when everything else in your life is being taken care of. Mm. When not too long ago, almost nothing in her life was being taken care of. Right. So, so I, go, ahead. go ahead, go ahead and finish your thought. Well, so, you know, when you look at the, the perfection in here, you, you know, is that nothing needs to be taken care of, you know, like you would always be doing the, the kitty litter, you know, without, you know, not wanting to do it, you right. know, and in, in her mind and all. And, and, and I, I just don't think that that's human. You know, there, there's going to be times that you know, you need to do it. You just don't want to do it. Right. Well, yeah. And then you need to decide, <laughs> you know, do I push myself and get this done because it, it's a positive for me or do you ignore it and then deal with, you know, those thoughts. Um, but we, we can't just let it go. But it sounds like a get to have to conversation, right? When I get to do something like, oh, I get to go to this amazing concert. I can't wait. 
that's something you're excited about. That's something mm-hmm. that you can't wait to do. Like you're anticipating and joy and, and excitement, right? But if I have to do something, like I have to go to work tomorrow, you're dreading it. You, you don't want to yep. do it. And that's the same thing with the kitty litter. Like I have to kill the kitty litter changing takes probably less than five minutes. You know what I mean? Like, so the whole, yeah. the whole shebang, not just scooping it out. Right. But it's really, it can be a neutral thing. Like mm-hmm. it can be neutral. And we put those positive, negative connotations on things. Right. And they don't like, It's like if I said, if I said, uh, you know, um, you know, bad, right? Bad has a negative connotation on it. Good has a positive connotation on it. Who decided that, right? You know what I mean? Humans, we did, right? We decided what was Mm -hmm. bad. And so we do the same thing in our minds when we're going through an event. Rather than staying present with it, we start to create around it. You know, like you, maybe you went through a, a divorce when you were, you know, your parents got divorced when they were young. My parents got divorced. And I, like I have an amazing life. I didn't see like um, anything that I felt like was a negative connotation all, all, for my parents, either one of my parents growing up, but somebody else could have seen things and put a negative connotation on it. So we could have gone through a similar experience, right? And have two different outcomes from yep. it. And like that's that's the same thing with progress that's the same thing yeah. with perfection right like i mean it's like um i think one time before you know i didn't have my laundry done and i was like trying to hide it on our podcast for anybody that was watching live and i was like hey, look i'm trying to be perfect and then i showed everybody that my laundry was piled up and i still needed to fold it and put a put it away and you know it's like who makes up the thoughts? Like who doesn't, who hasn't done their, not done their laundry for, you know, maybe an hour, maybe a day, maybe, maybe a week, who knows, but everybody has been like, you know what? I don't feel like doing that right now. I'm going to go do something else, or I don't have time to do that right now. Um, and so like we put the perfection on there because we think that being perfect is something we have to do when, The way that I see it is you're already perfect, whole and complete. You're exactly where you're supposed to be doing everything that you're supposed to be doing. And then you will have everything that you're supposed to have. You know, it's it's the way that we walk through this life and the attitude we have about it. And, you know, when you look at what we perceive but which is really where, you know, this comes from. I'm reminded of, and I'm, I'm not going to go deep into the philosophy, although I want to. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, when you look at that word perfection, sometimes that freaks people out, um, you know, because it's like, well, who can be perfect? Mm-hmm. Um, or, you know, if people are suffering from OCD or, or similar uh, types of issues, that's really going to mess you up because, you know, you're going to be heading towards something that you're never going to attain. Um, unless though, we, we go back to ancient Greek philosophy and that's the last I'll (laughs) go deep into, but the point of what was being said there is being true to self Mm -hmm. that without going into the detail of it, one of the things, you know, that they would use was, you know, examples of, you know, like if you look at a rock, um, you know, a rock doesn't always look like another rock. Yeah. But if you have a bunch of rocks that look different, are they still a rock? Yeah. And what we look at is what really makes a rock a rock is it's not trying to be anything but a rock. Right. So it's not the outside appearances that we look at, the the shapes, the colors, the perfections, imperfections, whatever of the rock is a point that the rock is the rock. And one of the reasons why we could say that any rock I pick up is a perfect rock because that rock is not trying to be anything other than a rock. I love that you are saying this because I mean, the same concept can be applied to people and not just, exactly. not just ourselves, 
but other people, like, why am I trying, you know, like, why would I try to change somebody like you, for instance, I'll use you example. Well, you know, why would I try to try to change who you are, or who you're being or what you're doing, because you're sharing with me you, right? And, and so we do that to ourselves, we are who we are, but we try to be something that we're not for other people because we want to be liked, because we want to be comfortable, because we want to be right, you know, and, and those, those things like really get in the way of being who you really are and being true to yourself. So I think that's yep. brilliant. Because, you know, how many times, you know, are we trying not to be ourselves? Mm, yep. You know, and, and, and I, I'm not saying, you know, like the, the, Greek example was, you know, the rock doesn't try to be in the tree. And, and I'm not saying that, you know, we as humans are trying to be other than human in most cases. But are we trying to be our true to self human or are we trying to be a expectation version mm. of ourselves or a version of ourselves that mimics someone else? Oh, so so going through now, like, where did your I, idea of perfection come from? right? Is it your idea of perfection and what's perfect for you? Is yep. it your idea of progress and what's, what's, you know, how you're progressing or is it an external force that you've decided to take on as your own, you know, because. Which brings us back to that using, not using the word should. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because it really is, you know, and, and using an example of, of this recent client that a lot of her expectations and goals slash perfection is based on shoulds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I should have a particular looking place. I should be, you know, in a particular way I should be. So that should is defining one's progress and perfection versus trying to look at, well, interiorly, shoulds aside what are my progress and perfections for me you know what i also hear in there is comparison because mm. our shoulds and you know our progress and our perfection is based on an external world that is not like what our self is going through right i mean so we have so much social media we have so much access to seeing what other people are doing constantly and you know Gosh, would I love to be one of those thin, skinny models that just goes and tours Belize and, you know, Brazil and wherever all the time. But that's not my walk, you know. And so if I compared myself to, you know, their tan, their, you know, their look, their ability to go travel, their finances, then then I would be miserable because I would think that I should be somewhere further mm -hmm. away than where I'm at. And where I'm at is not perfect, which I feel like it is. You know, and, and I also want, like, I, I think that people really need to know, like 100% of the time destiny to me is meaning that 100% of the time you are set up for success. So if you go through a, a life like that, and I was just listening to a Kyle Cease um, podcast. Um, but if you go through life with that mentality, that everything is perfect, like whether you get into a car accident, it's perfect. If you di didn't turn in your, your essay or your, your thesis or whatever, it's perfect, you know, or if you got this grade, it's perfect. If you, if you get this raise at work, it's perfect. Like if you start to go through a life with that attitude and that ability to see things as perfection constantly, then you won't have to, you know, you won't even have to worry about progress because you'll know you're always where you're supposed to be. Right. And mm -hmm. you won't have to worry about doing something to make it perfect. Right. And so like that would be my listener challenge. If I were to say, that, just go, anyone, go for a week and look at everything as happening as perfect. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that won't be a challenge because there may be things that happen to you in that week that you go, how in the heck is this perfect? But I promise you it is. And, and it will, it will help you to see things differently. And I like it and I agree with it. 
The yeah. only pushback I, I, I can hear people saying, so if everything that's happening to me is perfect, mm -hmm. then why should I even try? So I lost my job. Well, that's perfection. And I'm now broke and that's perfection. And I said, watch TV for my couch all day while I'm broke and unemployed. I guess that's perfection. And I would say that your doing should come from inspired action, not from, not from a place of have to, but from a place of what are you inspired to do? Okay, well, that job didn't work out. You know what? Oh, Indeed, uh, you know, is, is hosting an online virtual job fair. You know, who knows? Whatever it is. Oh, this came across my, my desk. Or somebody told me, hey, I told them I lost my job. And the next thing you know, you're like, oh, there's a job fair over there. Do I, am I inspired to go to it? No, it doesn't feel right for me. I'm not going to go. But then mm -hmm. I walk into wherever and I'll use, you know, a, a food chain, for example, right? I walk in and they're like, hey, we're hiring. And you're like, you know what? Like, I feel inspired. This person was very warm and welcoming. I really like the energy here. This is what I'm going to do. What, yep. what you're inspired to do will always lead you down the right, you know, during, down that perfection. I like it. So, so I appreciate that you pointed that out because I forget that some people, you know, and, and. That's not a negative or positive, but some people don't don't have that um, ability to to go. I'm going to tune in and see what's next, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where I feel like the way that we we speak in this podcast gives them the ability to open up that dark tunnel that they've been in, see a little yep. bit of light, and and see a new possibility for themselves. Oh, totally agree, and. And I didn't say any of that to take away from the listener challenge, no. um, but I, I don't want people to misinterpret or no, you know, look, look at it from the different viewpoint. And, and I, I really love how you say inspired action. Oh, yeah. and I, I think that's a, a wonderful quote that, um, you know, because that, again, goes back to what I was talking about in the perfection of self, you know, if I'm being true to self. Mm -hmm. um, that's that perfection, but I don't know how I can be true to self without some sort of inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. That's where we, I feel like we, we all need to get back to is listening and, and figuring out what's next for us rather than feeling the need, uh, out of, um, survival, out of sacrifice, right. To go do something just because oh, I got to pay my bills. I have to pay my bills. You yep. know what I mean? Yeah. I understand that that's something that you get to do in this life. And if you're going to be miserable doing it, why would you want to do it anyway? You know? So that's just, that's just the way that I think. And, and so, like I've had jobs offered to me as of recent, even where they're like, oh, this is great. And I first monkey mind goes, oh, money. And then I hear what it is. And then I go, okay, well, how does that feel? That does not feel exciting. I am not interested in that. Thank mm -hmm. you. But no, thank you. Right. And, and so like, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm a farm girl. I'm a country girl. Like I, I would shovel manure if I needed to. And that doesn't sound exciting. And if it was a have to, then I would, but I don't live my life that way. And so I yep. choose to do things because I choose to do them rather than I have to do them. Right. Which helps you to be inspired because you're making that choice. Mm -hmm. And hopefully the choice is coming from that area of, you know, who am I really? And if it's coming from that, then you're being true to self. And now we're back to our perfection and all that good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's for your highest and best good, right? Yeah. That's, that's, that's really what it is. Yep. Be like, I mean, it, and there is nothing wrong with service industries or, or, you know, anything, anything, yep. but if you feel like, you know, let's say going into Applebee's and being a waitress is going to be, I get to be around people and I get to make money and I get to have fun and I love my job. Good for you. You know, cause God, exactly. knows, I love, I love a good waitress, right. You know, or waiter. And 
And if that inspires you, absolutely. I'm 100% supportive. And if mm-hmm. something different inspires you, then chase after that, you know, go, yeah. go for that. Look, well, is the way I figure it at every job, every piece of employment that in some way is serving the community, mm-hmm. which could be an individual, like you're saying, you know, like, like a fast food restaurant or whatever. Well, that's a needed, necessary job. So therefore it's a good, Yeah. you know, and, and so many times society judges certain jobs as better than, Yeah. you know, but I don't judge the job based on the money. It, it, to me, the job is based on the value to society. Amen. And yeah. society needs to eat. Yeah. And I don't care if you're working at a fancy restaurant or a, a chain, yeah. you know, whatever restaurant, you are serving society. And and that to me is, is a very worthy job. So so it was funny because this came up yesterday. So I'm gonna say it again. It's like you have had, if you've ever been to any kind of restaurant and you have had somebody who just brings the light when they come, you're like, oh my gosh, what an um, amazing dining experience. Whether you're at McDonald's or Applebee's or, or, you know, prime steakhouse or wherever, right? It, it's how they bring the light and the joy in their position. And so to me, like that's what's your inspired, like that's, that's your passion, you know? And, um, and I have been there, like I could, you know, I've been in a bad mood, go to dinner and I have somebody like that come into my space. And I'm like, holy moly, gosh, that was just incredible. And thank you because you've made my whole night, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, anyway. And and I figure in in a, a experience like that, you know, that person is being true to self. They're not just, you know, acting for a good tip yeah. because you actually got inspired by it. So there was something natural about their energy and, and you know, their outlook that it wasn't just, I'm going to put on this fake smile and maybe get a bigger tip. Yeah. But yeah. It, it was a genuineness and that rubbed off so that then you felt better. Yeah. Because you're not going to feel better by somebody faking something. No, no, for sure. And, and that's, you know, again that's what we're all doing when we're going after things that we feel like we have to do. And I'm air quoting yep. for those of you who are listening, but we don't want to have to do stuff. We want to get to do stuff. We want to want to do stuff. And, and so again, that's progress in learning the difference, learning the difference between, you know, what you get to do in this life and what you have to do. Like I had children, yep. I get to take them to school every day. I don't, I get to half hour drive each way. And it's a half an hour drive each, each way in the afternoon to go get them. But I get to do that. I have the ability to have a car. I have, you know, there's, there's so many good things that come from that. That's time with them that I get to spend and yep. they're getting an amazing education where they're going. So like, why would I dread that? Why would I feel like that's something I have to do? I get to do that. And I'm excited about it every day. Mm-hmm. And, and that's a good cognitive shift, Yeah. you know, because how many times do we hear parents, guardians, you know, say, you know, I, I have to watch my kid. I have to go get my kid. I, you know, in, in that very negative way, when like what you're saying is sure, it might be inconvenient for you or you might be tired or whatever, but you know, looking at it from a, a positive viewpoint, you now have an opportunity to spend time with your child. Yeah. And don't forget that we did homeschooling last year. And so I really have a lot of um, um, gratefulness towards teachers as well <laughs> and they get to go to school this year. So I'm totally thrilled about that. But. Yep. I, I will go pick up my kid now because they <laughs> oh, used they, to be yeah, at home. <laughs> do, and I will praise you for taking care of them. Thank you. <laughs> oh, well, good conversation yeah. today, Chris. I really appreciate yes. it. And uh, yes. I like that when we have a little bit of, you know, like we don't co- completely agree because it, it dives in a little bit more and, you know, it's always, it's always a little bit more eye opening even for myself. So I appreciate that. Yeah, no, we're, we're usually, I mean, we're, I don't even think that I would put in disagreements. We're, yeah, we're right. on the same page. Yeah. Um, just a different perspective. perspective. <laughs> yeah, that's all. 
that's it. And as we've said before, you know, a perspective isn't necessarily right or wrong. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're not going to put good, bad on it. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Well, that was wonderful. Thank you guys so yes. much. Thank you for listening. Thank you guys for uh, supporting us. We really appreciate you. And, and we hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving if you hear this before Thanksgiving. <laughs> yes, we, we are recording this before Thanksgiving. It should drop before Thanksgiving. And uh, yeah, uh, everybody have a, a wonderful and grateful Thanksgiving. And we will be back after Thanksgiving. Yeah. All right. See you guys later. All right. Bye-bye.